you're here and I'm popping in today. Happy Monday and happy back to school. I know a lot of people are going back to school today for the first time. And I have beginning this question a lot. We actually had it posed in, well, somebody asked something similar to this in the group the other day in the Facebook group that I lead. I'm, I'm broadcasting this live on Instagram and Facebook, by the way. So if you hear Facebook, that's why you hear that. So it's how do we get our tweens and teens to do what we want them to do? My gosh, that's probably like the million dollar question that you guys have probably asked a thousand and a half times. And sometimes there's an answer to that. And sometimes that's a really hard thing to answer. Um, so it's, it's, you've probably figured out that trying to force something on your tween or your teen girl is not always going to get things accomplished. And um, that's generally not what I would recommend you do anyway. Although sometimes you you might not have a choice and that's really all you can do. But um, really what you want to do is follow a couple pretty simple guidelines in order to get her to buy in to making a decision that's really, really value driven and really healthy for her and probably will serve her life in a really good way. The first step in order to get her to do what it is you want her to do is get clear with yourself and get very honest with yourself why it is you want her to do it. And what I mean by that, by getting honest with yourself is notice any types of emotional triggers that come up for you. So if you're finding that you're getting really stressed out because she's not doing something you want her to do, sit with that and get really clear on why it is it's stressing you out so much. And what I kind of mean by that is in summary, letting go of your own bias towards maybe it's an activity you want her to sign up for or a, an event or um, something like maybe you want her to, to work with this mentor that you have met at an event and you think it'd be a great tutor for her or something like that. So let go of your own bias, which I know is very hard to do as a parent. Obviously, you're biased. But if there's something that that's going to be serving for you that may not serve her, at least in her mind, see if you can get past that bias. Then here's the major reason of that, because most tweens and teens, the way their brains are wired is they want to be making their own decisions. They're vying for independence from you, her parents, right? And ultimately, if they get this sense that you're forcing something or you're really pushing something on them or it's your idea, then they might just to try and practice and learn some independence, which is a normal part of tween and teenagehood, they might choose the exact opposite, or they might act like they don't care, or they might pretend like it's not important to them. And that's, that's a normal part of being a teenager is learning how to test limits. That's how we learn safety. That's how we learn how to be brave and courageous and things like that. So just know that the more she gets a sense that this is your agenda and something that you really want her to do, that may backfire later. Okay, so just get really clear on your own biases and your own triggers that you have behind this and see if you can put those aside. And that leads us to, to step two, which is any request you make of her, or any suggestion you make needs to be rooted in values. So like family values, core values. And if you're not clear on what those are, if you guys have never had a conversation about what those are, don't come at her and say, well, this is one of our values because she may not have consented to values. Values have to be something that everyone agrees upon in the whole family. So if you feel like you're ready to make a request and you, you might need to backtrack and have a little family conversation where you come up with what are the values that are most important to your family. So it could be something like honesty or it could be something like prioritizing nutrition or it could be something like um, making sure that you get enough self-care and rest every day. Those are important values of your family. She has to agree to those and she needs to know why. I mean, you guys know how teen, how toddlers, sorry, how toddlers are. They always want to know why, 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 right? That doesn't go away. In fact, we as adults always want to know what's in it for me. What, why is this important? And so when you come at her with values, let her know why they're important if she's not coming up with them herself and see if she can chime in once she figures out why they're so important. So any, any suggestion you make, any request you come up with for her needs to be rooted in values. So that way you can say, well, we agreed upon these values. This is something that you said was really, really important to you. you know. And yes, you might have to sacrifice your time 
doing something that's valuable to you as well, but see, we have these two values that are both important to you. And you can see how this was important as well, this thing I'm trying to get you to do. And that leads me to step three. When you have multiple things that she wants to do or you want her to do, this is something that happens a lot with teenagers and tweens, especially in today when we have their program, they do sports, they do band, they do activities, they do all kinds of things, right? So we want to make sure that we put the ball in their court as much as possible and let them make the choice on what is most important to them. This will be easy if they've already visited their values and they know what is truly, truly important to the family and to their hearts, right? And if they don't feel like this is all your idea, right? So we want to make sure that she comes up with choices. She gets to make the choice that she thinks it's her idea. And if you guys are struggling with this, a little trick you can do is you can give her multiple right answers. So if she's kind of like, I don't really know, like, or she's not really uh, listening or paying attention to you, say, listen, I expect you to make a choice. These are your choices. Here's three right answers. You don't tell her they're, they're right answers, but in your mind, they're all the right answer, i.e. you can't lose if she chooses any of them, right? And put the ball in her court, let her make the choice. So number three, most important thing is to let your daughter choose whatever it is you want her to do, whether it's clubs, whether it's um, activities, whether it's what's for dinner, right? Let her choose as much as possible, especially if at meal times you're having trouble getting her eat to eat certain things or you're trying to change your diet or something like that, that's really important. All right, so that's three. And the last thing is, when you have your values discussion, it's important that you highlight that for every decision we make, we want it to be value driven. And for every decision we make, there's always a consequence. It could be a pleasant consequence or it could be an unpleasant consequence. And sometimes we can't always foresee what the consequences are. So, we want to, when we make a decision, when we help our daughters, when we help our tweens and teens, we help our friends, even adults make decisions, we want to be accepting that there will be consequences. And as adults, we need to accept consequences and, as, and we need to model that for our teens and tweens. What we don't wanna do is get in front of them and say, okay, I'm gonna make this so easy on you and make, see that you can avoid every single consequence that's out there. We want her to learn that it's okay to face consequences for them to come up and that nothing is permanent. So if something happens as a result of a decision, first of all, that's normal. There's always a consequence for every decision we make, right? And every behavior we do. And secondly, it's okay to change, change, right? So she can make a different decision. She can change her mind. She did have lots of choices before, so she could always change her mind and that's okay. The take home there is it's okay for her to accept consequences. It's okay to let her fail. And if you learn nothing else from me, allowing a tween and teen girl, especially those that tend to be a little bit perfectionistic, allowing them the space to fail and to make their own decisions and face their own consequences is what's gonna teach them to succeed in the future, to get back up, to be resilient, to be brave, and to get back out there every time that they fail. Okay, so otherwise what's gonna happen is they're gonna be so afraid of failing, they're gonna to start to develop all kinds of sort of obsessive or compulsive or perfectionistic types, types of behaviors, or they'll just start avoiding things altogether. And we don't wanna teach them that, right? We, we wanna teach our girls to be empowered and courageous and learn how to make their own decisions. So this is a, a process you guys can follow to help them do that. Number one, get, get rid of your own bias. Number two, Teach her how to make value-driven requests, request uh, decisions. It's Monday, it's hard to talk. Value-driven decisions, and that's rooted in a, a values discussion that you've got to do before that. Number three, make sure she has multiple choices in front of her and give her the agency to make the choice herself. Number four, allow her to accept and face the consequences of any decision that she makes. Be there to support her when she falls on her face and stumbles and then help her get back up and tell her it's okay to fall on her face and stumble. All right, so that's how to get your tween or teen to do what you wanted her to do. And, and really the, it's kind of a misnomer, the title of this video, it's really how to get her to do what she wants to do and to help her get clear that it's her idea. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week and a really happy Labor Day if I don't talk to you before then. Bye.